Hey y'all, it's Sarah. I am bringing you such a simple craft today that I almost feel guilty bringing it to you. However, I wanted to make this for myself. Personally, I want one to hang up. This is something that there are probably a million tutorials for out there already. I have not checked. However, um, that's part of the reason why I wanted to do it for myself is because I've seen it all over Pinterest um, and all over the farmhouse decor boards and things like that. I wanted one and this one is going to be so easy, easy that you guys are probably going to roll your eyes at me. So we're going to be using today one full sheet. This is a full entire sheet. Um, don't let the camera angle fool you. This is one of the big sheets at the 20 by 30 of foam core. And I'm going to show you what our cuts are. This is something else we'll be using. These are the Dollar Tree metal words that they put out usually for fall. This one has thankful, harvest, and welcome. And I'm going to be using welcome for mine. And I'm going to paint that today. Um, I want mine to be black. You could always keep it in this metal look if you wanted to. And it would really work great for what we're making. So let me move that out of the way. And let me start showing you what our cuts are going to be. So the first thing is your full sheet. The next thing is you're going to need five of the three inch strips by 30 inch. This is two two inch by 30 inch strips and then you want four strips at one and a half inches or one and a quarter however you want to frame yours whatever size you want to frame yours to but you'll need four for each edge um, 30 inches length on this one 20 inches length on this one and i'm mitering mine so that i have a nice mitered corner on my frame um, so I want mine to come out like this where they're all flushed together. I'm going to show you really quickly how I go about doing that. And let me get one out to give you a little practice run on that. I try to show this at least once with every video so that you guys are familiar on getting your own frames because I get asked a lot on my pieces if the frames are foam core too and they are so I want to be able to give you a nice frame option now keep in mind that it's not necessary to miter yours you can always do like the jointed one like this and when you're doing the farmhouse look that one works very well also so really quick, no matter if I was going to go with this strip or even if I wanted to do a two inch frame, I'm going to determine what my width is of this little strip. It's one and a half inch and I'm going to come off this side at one and a half inch. If I was going with a two inch frame, I would come off this side at two inches. You're going to want a perfect square. So once you get that perfect square, you are going to go from diagonal corner to diagonal corner. And that's going to give you 40, uh, 45 degrees. So I'm just going to run right through that. And there's a perfect 45 degrees. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And I want you to see that your longer tip needs to stay on the same length as your longer tip. So for this one, I'm going to go up this direction to make sure that those two longer parts are on the same side and the two shorter parts are on the same side. So this is how your end results should be on all four of your frame pieces. I'm trying to get through this calmly because I'm really excited. I wanted to do this one for me. And... It's so very simple, and it's something that I think is so super cute. So I'm not going to do a whole lot of painting. We're only painting the frame, and I'm just going to run through one with you at what I'm doing, which is um, the salvage barn wood. That's the one that I've been working through my house. That's the color wood that I'm using. 
you can definitely go through the list, find one of the tutorials that works for you on your paint color, on your wood trim color, and run with that one. For those of you that are looking for more of the brown tones, that video is on the Facebook group for the Peppermint Cactus. It has not been moved over to YouTube, but pretty much all the other colors are starting to kind of get their way on the YouTube channel. So really quickly, I'm just going to do a little bit of painting on these. I'm not distressing mine a whole lot. And by distressing, if you guys have not seen me do that, that is when I put the knot holes in. That is when I put the wood damage in. Um, that is when I put the nail holes in. And I'll give you a quick run through of a couple of those looks. So to do my nail holes, I just come in with something pokey. And I just poke them in right at my little mitered cuts. So anything that you have that's pokey, a pencil, um, a skewer, anything like that will poke into there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I want like a little gouge in my wood. So that's about all I'm going to do. I don't like to do a whole lot on my frames. I don't like my frames super busy. That is a personal choice. You could go through and do whatever you wanted to to this, especially since this piece is actually going to be very simplistic. And before I get started on this paint, I want to go ahead and glue down my other pieces. That way I can put this to the side, make sure I'm not getting any paint on it. Uh, because I want to keep mine white. Now you could go in and do these slats, any of the paint finishes that you want. I certainly could recommend a couple that I think would work really well for this. Some of these lighter colors could really work well as a background for this. Uh, some of the more plywood like colors. Any of these kind of colors could work really well for the background on this. I want to keep mine solid white. And I don't do that super often with these pieces but I am going to on this one you could always go in and do a little bit of color on your white you could go in with the gray tones anything like that but I want white for this I'm gonna start down at the very edge with this two inch piece so I'm gonna bring my hot glue gun in And I am going to hot glue this right into place. I want to hit my corners really well. Those are always the first spot to me that want to show wear. So I'm going to flush this up against here. Slide it all in place where it's flush on the edges, flush on the bottom. And I'm going to spin around and do my other side with the other two inch. And that is going to help me space out these pieces. You'll see why I'm using this um, white backer instead of black like I usually suggest. There are instances where I do use the white. A lot of times the black is a little harder to find. But on this one, I'm using the white intentionally because I want my background white too. I am going to be spacing these out a little more than some of my slats typically do. So now that those are in place and I know that specifically where my edges are, it's going to allow me to space these out a little more to get my dimension between these hot glue stuck to me. So I'm just going to come in here and kind of see just where I can space these out. And if you've got some edges that are a little raw, you can see that was kind of where my blade started getting dull and I had to switch. I'm putting that on the downside of it so it's not as noticeable. But you want your surface cuts to be on this one 
you want them to be some of your nicer cuts. So I feel like this is a pretty good spacing. I'm going to kind of keep with this. Um, you can always come in with something like this. Use it to help keep your spacing. That's typically what I do is I try to create something as a spacer so that I don't have to sit and measure and mark. I think we can all agree that is probably not my favorite part. So I'm going to go in, make sure I've got the cleanest, nicest side. And I'm going to go ahead and start placing these guys. And try to start flush at one end because once you drop these with that hot glue, you do not get a whole lot of wiggle time. If you've already played with these, you kind of already know that you want to get your placement down pretty quickly. Okay, I'm continually checking to make sure I put my nicest side forward. So coming in again, trying to flush those edges up first. When you're butting them really close against one another, it's not that big of a deal. Because you're automatically kind of getting them in place right off the bat. But since I wanted some fairly even spacing between these... I want to make sure that I get it laid down right where I want it since I want I don't have that guide kind of the same way as I do when I'm sliding them right up against each other. And you don't have to space these out. If you're not going to space yours out, your measurements would be different. I wanted the dimension in between each one of these. I still have hot glue strings. So I feel like I'm getting pretty good spacing on these. Just eyeballing it in. Normally, I take my ruler and do my spacing in between them, but I wanted a slightly bigger gap than that even this time. Guys, when I get to the brick video, I made a little tool out of foam core for the spacing on that. I am still just... I got the bricks done, and I will say that I personally like the results. However, I did not like my method. I feel like there's got to be a simpler way that by now somebody has already done um, tutorials on a brick look that is believable, that maybe is not as involved as the one that I used. Okay, so that's my backer. You can see all the nice dimension there. I'm going to move it out of the way. I wanted to go ahead and get that done so I could move it out of the way easily and not worry about getting paint on anything else. I'm going to come in. Oh, wow. I just realized these things are medium and they're so big. That is crazy. So I cheated already and painted my frames. I usually do, especially if I'm going to work on something white so i will show you how i did this one if you want more detail about this paint finish that i'm using uh go and find the barnwood tutorial the salvage barnwood tutorial that's what this one is i'm gonna bring this over 
I'm going to bring a paintbrush over. And FYI, this is the wax backing that I took off of those, um, the Dollar Tree chalkboard strips. I save these things because they're really great to paint on. You don't have to worry about your stuff sticking to it. But I did want to give you one little tip on saying you don't have to worry about your stuff sticking to it. Uh, really quick before I get my hands too involved and messy. When you're doing little bitty things like this that tend to want to slide all around on you. I do this with my little hooks when I'm painting those plastic self-adhesive hooks. I do it with a lot of things. This is just some poster tack putty. I am going to take just a little bit. And pop down on the back of this so that it doesn't slide as much. It's still going to slide a little bit on me because I'm using this wax paper. And this sticky stuff is not going to stick to that wax paper as well. But. It does help keep it from just flying across my surface, which I have a terrible time with. So that'll help hold it in place for me while I'm painting. Every time I brush it, so I don't have to worry about it slipping and sliding all over. And I'm just using just a art brush and I'm going in with the Waverly chalk paint and ink and this part is not necessary I just wanted mine black and there is water on my brush and you can see what that's doing so it will probably take more than one coat on this because my brush has been a little wet you could do this with your sponge, too. And I'm just kind of going in and making sure that my brush strokes are all the same direction. Um, when I'm saying you can do it with your sponge, this sponge right here is going to work really well on that, which is just the Dollar Tree makeup sponge. And I do love the coverage of black chalk paint it definitely has really nice coverage so I'm gonna bring my little my little fan over here to help dry that first coat and I'm gonna show you real quick the paint finish that I did for this frame and all I'm going to do is come in here with my Waverly Antiques Wax um, my Waverly Clear and then I'm going to do a second coat over it. So I'm taking my sponge. And guys, there are most of the tutorials are focused on painting and paint techniques. So there's always more details about the paint in one of those videos and the process and the tools. So definitely get um, in there and check those out. I just blew right off there so when you're putting down your antique you don't necessarily have to mix the clear I do because right now I cannot feel what I'm doing with these gloves and I feel like I'm in less control with them and I didn't want to lay my antique down too dark because this look is primarily a gray kind of look I'm just wanting the brown undertones really lightly if I go in with straight wax right now until I get used to working this material with these gloves on I kind of wanted to err in caution you could totally go in and just do it with your antique and be fine so that's all I'm doing to that you would do this to every piece do your sides I like to do my edges here and then I'm just going to come in with my black sponge and 
and I'm going to mix those pretty heavy. That was an awful lot of paint on my part. That's what I'm saying. I'm still having a hard time feeling my feels with these gloves on. So I'm going to work that goopy mix down into any of my little distress holes, my nail holes. I've gotten pretty heavy coverage. I can always come in with my dryer sponge, pull that off, or pull that paint back. If you don't like the grain on that one, you can pull your paint back with this other one. It gives you the more blur effect. The supplies videos go more into why I like each sponge and what I like about each sponge. And what the difference in the texture that they leave behind is. So this is really all I'm going to do to that. That was very simple, very easy. I did at least want to show it. But this craft does not require a whole lot of painting. Just a little bit. And I'm going to move this out of my way so I do not risk getting paint. I want to clean up all my paint mess really well when I'm working with the white and wanting to keep it white. Especially when I have gloves on, I can't tell um, if I've got the paint on my gloves. And I don't want to go and touch my white pieces and have a sad sad craft mistake so this is pretty dry already I'm gonna come in one more time make sure I pull the wetness off this brush here and honestly the coverage on this after one coat is really good you can see that for yourself, but this helps me blend out any of my brush strokes and make sure that I'm kind of hitting those edges too. I'd rather go ahead and do the second coat than get to the very end and realize it had one little spot that needed it. So that's all we have to do on that. I'm going to slide these paints completely out of the way. I'm going to put this to the side so it can be drying. And I'm going to show you one little thing real quick. This is something that I'm going to be putting on mine. And all this is, is just one of the Dollar Tree bamboo wreaths. This one, they consider the 12 inch. They have... A couple different sizes I'm gonna go with this one you could get away with a larger one on the scale of this but I wanted to show you that just making a greenery wreath is really not difficult especially if you're making one that's gonna be inside these make it really easy because they are not super thick they are not super tightly woven it allows you to weave your greenery in there. This is some Walmart greenery, I think. Pretty sure this one is. That I've just cut down to the stems. And all you have to do is just work those down in those spots. And they're going to pretty much hang in place for you. Now, if you wanted to hot glue it, you certainly could. I don't hot glue mine because I like taking them apart, reusing them, um, taking a few pieces off, adding a different little bit of floral to it. And I'm just going to go through real quick. All of those have been kind of poked in. And I'm just doing this. I'm not, not really trying to crush any of my leaves, but I am trying to work this where there's not a whole lot of crazy the other thing that i like to do if i'm going to use it outside or if i'm hanging it on a door and it might get a lot of movement i just go in with zip ties in those same places that way i can steadily change this out i can reuse it i just wanted to throw that out there um and i posted yesterday about hooks that you can use to hang your wreath on your foam core projects 
So I'm going to go ahead and bring mine in here. Can you see where we're going with this, guys? I'm guessing you, you kind of already know which piece that I'm trying to mimic because I've seen these so many times. And I keep wanting one by my front door. So now I've got my finished frame pieces that are completely dry. I did not want to risk it on this with it being so white on the background. I'm going to come in with my frame pieces. I like to start on one side and then spin all the way around. And fill in my frame pieces rather than do opposite sides. I know some, some people like to do framing where it's two sides and then two sides. But I kind of spin all the way around. I don't know if that makes a whole lot of difference. But I feel like it lets me um, be a little more sure about making it fitted. Especially if there's some slight errors in my cutting. not be so excited about this piece but I really am and it's so simple and it's probably been done a million and one times and that's why I want to do it because I have to be like all the cool kids and I want one too I'm gonna reload my glue gun here and the next part on gluing down your your lettering your wording now i prefer hot glue on this over everything i do know that the hot glue on those really skinny metal letters um can be a struggle and i've told you guys that some of the caustic glues can sit there and deteriorate your foam some of the wet glues can seep in I am going to try a glue that I use for scrapbooking, which means it is already, um, it's a low moisture glue because it's made to not warp scrapbooking things. So I'm hoping that will work. If it does work, then you guys will know that it's going to be a really good option, especially for these little skinny metal lettering. But I want you to see where we're at already. How cute is this? You guys. I'm loving it. If you've seen the video that I did on this little hack. It was like a little four minute video on making your little hooks to work with these. So I'll be able to change out whatever I want to put in this. And I'm going to gonna reach for this and I'm gonna hope no mine is still very wet however when I do get to glue it it is going to go right here guys I don't want to I don't want to do that at the moment I'm a little chicken I've burned myself more than once on that however I do want to show you some other options besides these little small ones so, one of the other options are the larger versions. Now, these are much easier to glue down with hot glue. You do have to kind of find a way to fill that in um, because they do have little holes for hangers. But that it's, would be just as cute if anybody wanted to try that method. Dollar Tree now has these MDF kind of press board um, I'm not really sure. It's it's mostly press board, I think, is what that is called. I've already painted mine. I painted it with the Waverly ink, and then I sanded it down with a block and went over it with uh, the Waverly clear. So you could definitely go that route, which is awesome. I can't lie. I'm going to like it all. I just am warning you. I like this whole look. I wanted one for myself, so no matter what I put here, I'm going to like so this is a really good option and i wanted to show one more thing and i posted this as a tip today on the peppermint cactus facebook page but i wanted to show you guys this now there's always the dollar tree sticker option 
Um, and I love their stickers. Like, I, I absolutely love their stickers. These are just their poster board stickers, and you could do that across here. However, I've done a lot of projects with those stickers, which means that leaves a lot of my words with the same font. Now, they do have wood letters, unfinished wood letters, but theirs kind of are, are a bubble letter, and I wasn't really a big fan of that bubble letter look, but I wanted to show you this little pack. It's... 124 count it's got four sheets of alphas in it and these are made out of craft foam so what i have done and you can see how nice the black looks you could always go in paint these out and you still may have to touch up your edge all i have done when i wanted to use these was pull my letters out and just trace around it with a black sharpie and my edges are taken care of too. A lot of these, the edges won't even show because my paint sunk down in there. So if you do need to touch that up. But this is just black paint over that. You see how nice that painted up. These are a nice font. They're a little bit dimensional. So it is almost like you're using painted wood pieces. So I wanted to show you that option. And then I wanted to show one more thing. Um, this one I painted white. This started off as purple. I painted them out white. Now I have uh, faux wood letters. The cool thing about doing these is they are foam. If you wanted to put them around a jar or something that's got some, some shape to it, these foam ones are going to do some things that wood ones would not. So I wanted to throw all of those options out there. I have not made up my mind which one that um, I'm truly going to use. I did not realize how much I was going to like how that one looked. So I'm a little torn here. I'm not going to glue anything down. I wanted to show you all those options. Uh, but I do want to show you the glue that I am going to test out on this. This is called Art Glitter Glue. I, I love this. It is a wet glue. However, it is one of the fastest drying wet glues I've ever played with uh, being a paper crafter. So I don't feel like it is at a high risk for damaging the surface and soaking through too poorly. The other thing about it is that it's meant for things like, well, it's called art glitter glue. Glitter is particles that aren't, um, they're a non-porous little particle. So my assumption is, is that if it works for glitter particles, it's going to work for this metal piece. Uh, so I will let you know how that works out because now I'm struggling to decide which way I want to go. You guys tell me. I may have to stare at this for a couple days. I did not know when I was going to show this as an example how much I was going to love it. So you guys tell me which one you think. I'm a little bit torn and um, I hope this gave you an idea of something. This is a really nice size. I know it doesn't seem like it in on camera but once I get it hung and show you some examples you'll see that's a really good size piece for what it is I hope you enjoyed this as much as me I can't wait to get this hung up really have to figure out what I'm gluing to it I will talk to you guys soon I've got several more crafts that I'm gonna get started in fall most especially talk to you soon